top 10 by Billboard's 19-year-old Kazakh guy, 3 million people listening to the song every day on Spotify, train station worker, 300 million Shazams from a small town. Hi guys, today's an unusual video, but first let me play this song for you. You probably heard that song from everywhere. It's actually playing on every radio station, everywhere in shopping malls. Anywhere you go, you probably heard that song. And it was made by this 19-year-old Kazakh guy from a city called Aksu. It's near the city Pavlodar. That's not even the biggest city in Kazakhstan. So the story of this guy is fascinating. He's from a rural area, from a small town. He made this remix in 2019 in March. He was still a student in this college. It's kind of like community college there he was studying as a train station worker and once he actually released that remix he went to work at a train station nearby he was signaling the trains for them to like stop at the train station or something like that so basically that's his job you know the average salary for this type of job is about 140,000 tenge so this guy made this remix in two hours once he was out of school so he made this remix he posted it on social media it was like the Russian social media called VK or Vkontakte and once he posted it there after like a few months somebody picked it up and reposted it and then someone else picked it up and then reposted it and it gradually started to become popular in post-soviet region and then it got picked up in Europe it got number one in UK and now it is in top 10 in the hot 100 by billboard and that's like the biggest music chart that you could probably think of he is actually above Post Malone, Harry Styles, Lil Mosey Ariana Grande. So this is crazy that this remix was released actually in March last year and like a year later it's top 10 in the Hot 100. So probably wonder what else he does, why and how he did it. Here's some more facts about him. The original song actually was released in 2016 by St. John called Roses. Rose, I in the corner with the body screaming it was out there and somehow Imam Bek saw it on social media and just downloaded the mp3 and started making the remix and by that point he's been doing remixes for like two years he was like watching youtube videos learning how to do them and he had like something like broken computer broken headphones and it's just crazy how he was able to make this remix without even having formal education and right now this remix is like way ahead of the original song there were 300 million shazams made on the song 3 million people listening to the song every day on spotify that's way beyond how the original song performed so this is crazy so next how the song was released he was approached by some European record label to be signed on the label and they sent the contract in English and he didn't know English he started translating it and it took forever for him to do that and then he hesitated to do that he was paid two thousand dollars in advance and then he was supposed to split 50 50 the royalties with this label but then this other label came from Russia that actually works with electronic music and they approached him with Russian contract and it was a Russian guy so you know we speak Russian in Kazakhstan so <laughs> Imam Bek was able to understand him was able to talk to him you know get to know the contract in detail and yeah he, then he signed with this guy and then actually the fun fact that he shared is that St. John never actually talked to Imam Bek himself it was funny how he just like posted the remix on his page and they're splitting the royalties the way that worked is that the Russian label actually talked to St. John and then they made the papers, made the deal, and that's how it's working right now. And actually there's a, another fun fact. We have a big label called Blackstar in, in Russia and they approached Imam Bek and wanted to maybe sign him, maybe work with him, who knows, but they actually didn't say anything. They asked for his number but didn't really proceed with that deal. It's funny how he released that track and went back to work. He said he didn't do it for money, first of all. He was like really into music all the time and it was like more of an expression. It was like creative work 
work for him so he didn't do it for the money and even if he was able to not work at all he still went for his daytime job and and then he actually started thinking of switching to doing music full-time I, I believe he's doing it full-time right now but um, he's so down to earth he's so sweet the main thing that I admire Iman Bek for is obviously he made this amazing track he made this amazing remix which became really popular but he was like so humble he was like I don't want people to recognize me on the streets I don't want this to be a big deal like the whole Kazakhstan was rooting for him was like excited for him was like coming to him taking photos taking autographs and they were so crazy about it but he was like no that's not a big deal you know nothing special happened I just made a remix in two hours you know he was sharing how he he saw someone listening to his track and like bouncing to that track in the car and like putting it out loud he was like he tries not to make a reaction if people don't know him so that it's not a big deal but it was like so crazy to hear that for the first time for him but yeah he's like down to earth he doesn't want to boast about it he doesn't think of it as a success but obviously it is as he said his first income that he got from that he was able to get a car for himself but he didn't and he still went back to work I don't know I was just admiring that so much also what he was able to do is actually something outstanding because out of the entire post-soviet region this is the second time somebody goes into uk top 40 chart the first time it was by tattoo which was a famous russian girls band that was the only time that you know the song from the post-soviet region got somewhere near the top charts of the world and right now imam Bek actually is the second one and he probably surpassed that mark so this is actually insane and I don't know what waits for him in the future, but the starting point is absolutely amazing. So yeah, this is everything I wanted to share about Iman Bik. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear more and I hope we're going to do an interview with him later on. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. If you like this video, you might also like this video about top 5 people globally famous from Kazakhstan. And yeah, see you later!